Hello, dear classmates. Welcome back to the logic simulation chapter. In the previous video, we talked about compile code simulation. In this video, we are going to introduce an even better simulation technique, the event-driven simulation. The compile code simulation technique has two problems. First, the gate delay model was not considered by compile code simulation. Second, the compile code simulation is oblivious. That means this simulator forget old results in the previous cycle. This is actually a waste of CPU resource. For example, given this circuit, we apply 0, 0, 0 in the first cycle. So we run the code for the first time. And then in the second cycle, we only change input A to B1. Because the compile code simulation forget all the results in the first cycle, so we will need to rerun all the code for the second cycle. This is actually a waste of CPU time because only signal A changes in the second cycle. So, can we do it in a more efficient way? The event-driven simulation was proposed by Ulrich in 1965. The idea is pretty simple. We evaluate a gate only if there is event at its gate input. In this way, we can save a lot of CPU time. An event is a signal value change at the specific time t and a gate with its input change are called activated. For example, for this circuit A, we can see there is an event at primary input A. This is a rising transition and the gate G2 is called activated because we have an event coming in at its gate input. We only need to evaluate one active gate which is G2 in event-driven simulation. The other three gates are not evaluated again in the second cycle because they are not activated. So, event-driven simulation is typically faster than compile code simulation. This slide shows a zero-delay event-driven simulation example. In this example, all the gate delay are assumed to be zero. At the beginning, we read in the initial condition of the circuit, and we read in a new input vector. We put active primary input fan out gate into a queue, which is a first in, first out queue of gates. In this loop, we will execute the events every time we evaluate a gate from the queue. If the output does not change, then we do nothing. If the output does change, then we execute this change and we put gate G's fan out gates into the queue. We continue in this loop until the queue becomes empty. In this lecture, we will use this notation to denote an event, G common VG plus, which means an event where the gate output G is changing to VG plus. At the beginning, we have two events at primary input where A is rising to 1 and the B is also rising to 1. So we put their fan out gates G1 and G2 into the queue. First, we pop out the first event out of the queue, where is G1. 
because G1's output does not change. So we don't actually need to execute this event. Then we pop up the next gate out of the queue. G2 is now rising to 1. Because this new value is different from its old value. So we will execute this event. The G2 output is now logic 1. And we put its final gate, which is G4, into the queue. Finally, we pop out the last event from the queue. And we execute this falling change at the G4 output. Now, there is no more gate in the queue, so we finish this simulation. Now, it's time for you to work on this quiz. Suppose in the first cycle, the value of A, B, C are 1, 1, and 0. The logic values in the first cycle has been denoted in this picture. Now, given a primary input change at B. Please finish this event-driven simulation using this flow chart. Now please pause the video and work on this quiz. OK, are you finished yet? Given this G1 in the queue, we can see that G1 is changing to 1. So this event will be executed since its new value is different from its old value. And we put two final gates, which are G2 and G3, in the queue. Please note that the order of these two gates does not matter. And then we pop out the first G3 where the output of the inverter will be changed to 0. So we execute this event and we put fan out gate G4 into the queue. And then we pop out the next event which is G2 output changing to 1. And we also push the fan out gate G4 into the queue. Now we pop out the next gate, which is G4, out of the gate. Since at this time, G4 inputs are 1, 0. So the output of G4 does not change. So this event is actually not executed. And the same thing here. So finally, we have our simulation result that is output k is equal to 0. Have you got it correctly? Now let's consider non-zero gate delay in our simulation. Let's see if we can modify the zero delay algorithm to perform simulation with delay. Suppose the gate delay are denoted beside each gate. Now each event is denoted as G common VG plus which is the new output of gate G at time T. That means gate output of G is changed to VG plus at timestamp T. Every time we read in a new vector and uh, we put the activate PI's fan out gate to the queue. The event queue is now a priority queue of events sorted by timestamp T. Every time we will pop out one event with the smallest timestamp T from queue and we will check if the gate output change or not. If the gate output does not change, 
and we will move on to the next event. If the gate output does change, we will execute this event and uh, we will schedule more new events. And this loop will continue until there is no more events in the queue. For example, suppose B is changed to 1 at time 0. To simulate this input vector, initially Q has only one event. At timestamp 0, we will pop out this event from the queue, and the gate output of G1 will change to 1 at time 8. Now we move on to time 8, and we pop out the next event. When we execute this event, G1 is changed to 1. We will schedule two more events. The G3 output will change to 0 at time 12, and the G2 output will change to 1 at time stamp 16, and uh, so on and so forth. At time stamp 22, we finish this simulation. So we can see that output K is rising to 1 at time stamp 18 and then it's falling to 22 at time 0, which is a correct output. And now we can see a hazard. So nominal delay simulation will produce more information about timing of this circuit. But this algorithm has a problem. Suppose that we change gate G2 delay to 6 nanoseconds. In this way, we will have both H and J changing at the same time, T equals to 12. This is what we call a simultaneous input change. Suppose we execute the event G2 first. At this time, because J is 1 and H is also 1, so output K does not change. So we don't need to schedule any new event. And then next, we execute G3 falling to 0. Similarly, at this time, output K does not change. So, eventually, we will have G4, K equal to 0 at time 18. This is the correct output. However, let's consider another order. Suppose we execute G3 first. So now, H is equal to 0 and J is equal to 0. In this case, G4 will be rising to 1 because both input to this NOR gate are 0. And then when we execute G2 rising to 1, when we evaluate this NOR gate, the output does not change, it's still 0. So we schedule no event. Then at time stamp 18, we would result in one wrong event. So we can see that this algorithm actually cannot handle simultaneous input change correctly. The output will depend on the order of the event executed. So this is not a good algorithm for nominal delay. The solution is that we need to propose a two-pass algorithm. In the first pass, we will execute events. LE denotes an event list, which is a priority queue of events. This is the same as before. Now we need a new pass. In the second pass, we would 
Evaluate the gates in the activity list LA, which is a list of gates to be evaluated. Now let's look at the new flowchart. In the first pass, we will check the event list. We pop out the first event from LE. If the output of gate G does not change, then we will move on to the next event. If the output does change, then we will execute this event and we will put the fan out gate of gate G to an activity list waiting for the second pass. After we executing all the events in the first pass, we now enter the second pass to evaluate the gates in our activity list. Every time we pop out one gate from the activity list, we evaluate gate G and we schedule a new event in the future. Please note that in the second phase, we evaluate gate input of a gate together so that we can handle simultaneous input change problem. Also, we schedule event no matter VG changes or not. In this way, we can handle hazards. Now, let's look at the same SIC problem. Using the second pass algorithm, both G30 and G21 will be evaluated all together in the second pass. And uh, we will have one gate G4 in the activity list. When we evaluate output, we will find that G4 is 0 at time 18. So this is the correct output. So we solve the SIC problem using the second pass. Now using the new two pass algorithm, please work on this nominal delay event driven problem. In this quiz, suppose that A is rising to 1 at time 0, C is falling to 0 at 2, B is falling to 0 at 4, and A is falling to 0 again at time 8. Now please pause the video and fill in these three blanks. Okay, have you got it? Look at timestamp 2. We have C falling to 0. So that G1 is in our activity list. And we will schedule an event G1 rising to 1 at time 10. Similarly, at time 10, we will execute this event. However, because originally G1 output is 1, so there is nothing changed. There is no gate in the activity list. Of course, there is no scheduled event in the second phase. At time stamp 12, we execute a new event. This time, G1 is changing to 0. So we have two fan out gates, G2 and G3, in our activity list, and we schedule two new events in the future. Have you got the answer correctly? Now we have an FFT for you. If we look at the simulation output carefully, we would see that there are actually three redundant events. In the timing chart, we can see that at time 10, G1 output is actually 1 already. So this event is 
a false event, which is redundant. Similarly, at time 20 and 22, we also have false event. Because the second pass algorithm schedule events no matter VG changes or not. So there are many false events which waste our CPU time. Can you invent a new algorithm that can remove those false events? This is a good FFT for you to think about. Now, finally, let's talk about the data structure. There are two ways to implement the data structure for event list. The first one is the linked list data structure. So we link the events according to their timestamps. For the same timestamp, T1, we can have a linked list of events. They occur at time T1 simultaneously. In this data structure, the timestamp is flexible. So we can insert an arbitrary timestamp in between two neighbor timestamps. However, the problem is that if we want to search for a particular timestamp, it takes a while to search. And the second implementation is a cyclic array, which is also known as the timing wheel invented by Oldrich in 1969. In this timing wheel, it's a circle of array where each time slot represent a timestamp and we have a linked list of events associated with each timestamp. This data structure is faster to search than the linked list approach. However, the problem is that because we have a fixed number of slots, so, we cannot insert an arbitrary time slot between two neighbors. We have a limited number of L slots in a cycle. Now, in summary, this video talks about event-driven simulation which consider gate delay. This simulation technique is potentially faster than compile code because we only evaluate those gates with input change. There are two scenarios. For the zero delayed simulation, we can use the simple one pass algorithm. For nominal delayed, we need to use a more complicated two pass algorithm. False event means those redundant events that does not cause any signal change. Finally, we have two different implementations, the link list approach and the timing wheel approach, which is faster but less flexible than the link list approach. Now let's compare a compile code and event-driven simulation. Compile code is simple to implement, but it does not consider gate delay. And it is oblivious. That means we forget all the previous simulation result. So every time we need to do a simulation all over again. This is suitable for a simulation with high circuit activity. The other one is the event-driven simulation, which consider gate delay, and we only simulate events when it occurs. So it is suitable for circuit with low activity. However, the algorithm is more complicated to implement. In general, event-driven simulation 
is better than the compile code simulation. Before we end this video, we have two FFT for you. FFT number one. Suppose we use the timing wheel data structure, which has only a limited number of slots in a cycle. So what happens if we have a remote event, which is outside of the wheel? What can we do? FFT number two, what can we do to modify the algorithm to remove these false events? These two questions are very interesting. Please think about them. Thank you for watching.